Is your website failing to bring you in the new customers you thought it would? If so, maybe you're making some of these five mistakes that I see new business owners making all the time. These mistakes can apply to most types of websites. They're easy to correct, but if left uncorrected, can stop any business growth before it's even gotten a chance to get started. I'm gonna use my experience as a freelance website developer to help you avoid these mistakes and what to do instead. Like my friend Annie, who came to me recently looking for some SEO advice. She had a website, but she didn't seem to be getting any new clients from it. She hated having to spend so much of her time on marketing. She just wanted to do what she loved to do and that was working with her clients. I was able to make some small changes to her website that started generating her new clients within just a few weeks. What were the five mistakes that she was making on her website? Before we jump into the first one, I just want to tell you a quick story. Just recently, myself and my husband were out on a rare date night and the waitress came and she gave me the menu and I thought, this is amazing. I'm so looking forward to a lovely meal. And I start reading the menu and I thought, wow, there's such a selection here. There's like three pages of meals to choose from. And as time went on, I started thinking, oh my goodness, there's just so much here to choose from. And I find myself not able to make a decision at all. And yeah, okay, you're thinking, well, how does this relate to websites? Well, the fact that I wasn't able to make a decision was because I was being overwhelmed with having too much choice. And this can happen to our website visitors when they land on our website and we're telling them to sign up for our newsletter, to read our blog, to purchase a product. We're overwhelming them with choices and it leads to them taking no action at all. The first mistake that most people make on their website is failing to have a clear call to action. Now your call to action is going to be different depending on what your business is, but it could be to read your blog, it could be to sign up for your newsletter or to download a digital product. So to make this decision, you need to think, do I need to put in some work to show that I know what I'm talking about? and to start de developing a relationship with them first. And then they're more likely to become a paying customer down the line. If you think this might be the case, then you might wanna consider putting together a digital download or an ebook that you can give away for free in return for someone giving you their email address. Moving on to mistake number two then. How often have you gone to someone's website and you know that little box that they have and say, sign up for my newsletter and I'll send you weekly emails that are great, blah, blah, blah. I know I've pretty much never signed up for an email newsletter like that. However, when you go to someone's website and they have download this free resource that is guaranteed to get you X results, you're gonna say, oh yeah, well that kind of sounds pretty cool and I'll give you my email address in order to download the product. I'd say that's a bit more likely and I know I've definitely signed up for things that way myself. So mistake number two is not having a lead generator on your website. It's where you put together a really valuable resource that you give away for free in exchange for your potential customer's email address. Building an email list is one of the most important things that you can start doing for your business. Even Ali agrees. For me, starting an email newsletter was one of the best decisions I've made in my life as a creator. And now every time I send an email, I make around $5,000. You don't need anything fancy in order to start building an email list. You can sign up for something like MailChimp's free plan, where you can start collecting your email addresses. They'll even let you create a landing page where you can put all the benefits of your free product on there in order to convince them to sign up for it. And you wanna have your lead generator in a number of different places throughout your website, quite prominently, because this is the one piece of action that you want people to take when they come to your website. If you're enjoying this video, then can I please ask you to click the like button? It doesn't cost you anything, but it really benefits my YouTube channel. Time to move on to mistake number three then. Now, I'm not a fan of shopping. I don't like to go in to a shop, have to shuffle through all the racks. I'm the kind of person who wants to be able to walk into a shop get what I want and get out of there. The same experience could be had by your website visitors. They're simply searching for an answer to a problem that they have. They want to find that answer and get out of there. They don't want to have to search around the different sections of your website in order to find what it is they want. If they find themselves doing that, then they're gonna get frustrated and irritated and probably go to a competitor's website instead. Mistake number three then is about having a clear navigation and structure to your website. You wanna make it really clear and obvious how people can find what it is that they're looking for. You need to have clear page names. Things like about, blog, contact me are okay. You don't need to come up with fancy names for your pages just to be a little bit different. And if you have a blog section on your website, consider keeping everything nicely categorized so that people can easily find the answers to the questions that they're looking for. 
Another super important reason why you need to have clear, organized structure on your website is so that Google understands your website content and can adequately recommend it to the right readers. This is called SEO in normal people speak, just in case you were wondering. So let's move on to mistake number four. Now I'm fairly tall, I'd say taller than average, and I have long legs. So generally the regular size fitting of trousers doesn't fit. So something that I'm often looking for is long pairs of trousers. I might go on to Google and I'll say, I'm gonna search for jeans in size long. And then I'm gonna see what comes up is the shopping ads at the start and then a couple of sponsored posts and then the ones after that are going to be the website pages that Google feels will best provide the answer for the keywords that I have searched for. So the keywords I searched for were jeans in a size long and Google said right what are the websites that I can provide this person in order for them to find what they're looking for. So what are people putting into the search bar whenever you want to appear as a result for that search? Are they typing in the name of the service plus the location that they're in? If so, then you can create a page on your website that says exactly that, that has the name of your service plus the location that you're in and that you can provide that service in. And then have content within that page that reinforces that. So reinforces that someone comes to your website, finds that page and says, ah, I know this person provides this service in my location. So in case you were wondering, mistake number four is not having relevant keywords within your content. And you can go a step further with this. You can develop a blogging strategy where you start to creating blog posts that help you appear in this search for more keywords, obviously relevant to the services you provide. And this can be a really good way of increasing the amount of website traffic that your website gets. And remember to include your lead generator in your blog post as well. So moving on to our last mistake then, mistake number five. So this one is a little bit technical, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through step by step. So feel free to replay or pause the video if you need to. When we create a new website, it enters a vast sea of millions of different websites on the World Wide Web. And Google has this enormous task of figuring out what the content is for all of those different websites and in what case should it serve this website to this viewer or this search person or this searcher <laughs> you know what I mean there is something that we can do that only takes a few minutes to set up that is like having a formal introduction to Google so mistake number five then is not using something called Google search console for this you're going to need to have access to the back end of your website First thing you need to do is you need to go to the Google Search Console website and I'm going to leave a link to this in the description of this video. You need to grab the URL of the website that you want to add and you want to pop it in this spot here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do that, paste that in, click on continue and Google Search Console wants to verify that we own this website. The method that we're going to use for verification purposes is this HTML tag. So we want to go here and we want to copy this link here. Then we need to go back to our website. This is our WordPress dashboard. We want to go to plugins, add plugin, search for headers, footers. We're going to use this plugin here, insert header and footers, install now, and we're going to activate. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to settings, and then you're going to see WP headers and footers. Click on that one. And this is where we're going to paste in our script. So just simply paste in that in there. And it needs to be in this header section. Go to save changes. Once that's saved, you can go back to Google Search Console and click on verify. Now you have verified to Google Search Console that you own this website. So we can now go to property. Next thing we want to do is we want to go to sitemaps. We're going to just submit a sitemap that gets Google started indexing our proper our website. For that, we're going to need another plugin. For this, we're going to need Yoast SEO. That's not spoken. Once we have this plugin downloaded and activated, go to where it says Yoast SEO on the side here. We're going to go to it might not be tools, probably going to be settings. Let's see. Yeah. And in this search section here, we're going to go to sitemaps. So we're going to view the XML sitemap. And these are the sitemaps that we are going to submit to Google Search Console. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to copy this one. We don't need the whole thing. We just need this section and submit. 
Doing these couple of steps will ensure that Google knows that your website exists. If you find that you have a website and you've made sure that you're not making any of these five mistakes, then perhaps you want to try and increase your website traffic to your website. And perhaps you want to try blogging as a strategy in order to do that. If so, then consider watching this video next where I show you exactly how to do just that.